do me a favor. Look at your name and say, I don't want to die and go to hell. But what must I do to be saved? You can be seated. I don't want to die and go to hell. But that being said, I, I want to find out what must I do to escape the damnation of hell. Because we're living in a day and time that what's being missed or what's absent from the pulpit is an opportunity to know who Jesus is. And I'm not talking about Jesus of the Bible. I'm talking about Jesus that I have accepted as my Lord and my Savior. That I know him personally see I read about Humpty Dumpty but I never met Humpty I heard about Goldilocks and the three bells but I never met Goldilocks I've heard about Little Red Riding Hood but I never met so it doesn't matter so I don't want to take who Jesus is and compare it to some fictitious being. I don't just want him to just be some figure that's out there. But I want him in here. I want him in my heart. I want to know who he is. As the songwriter said, everybody need to know who he is. You don't need to know who of him. You need to know who he is. Because you know of him, that means your punishment is going to be greater when you die and go to hell. But when you know him for yourself, then that let me know that I'm prepared to escape the damnation of hell's fire. But so many people in this day and time are caught up in religiosity. They don't care what the Bible said. I, I, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, and, and I'm Catholic, and I'm Episcopalian. You're going to hell. Because one thing I, I didn't hear you say is, is I'm holy. Because God, did, I, I don't care if you don't ever like it, he never said be Baptist, and you can't prove it to me. He never told you to be Catholic. He never told you to be Methodist or Episcopalian. He told you to be like me. And I don't want nobody talking about John was a Baptist. You're a liar. John, John was a Baptist by occupation. He baptized folks. Not because he adhered to a doctrine. But what makes people Baptist is their doctrine. What people make people Methodist is their doctrine. What makes people Catholic is their doctrine. Come on, talk to me. But see, what makes you holy is you adhere to the tenets of God. To the principles and the statutes of God. In other words, his holy word. You adhere to God's holy word. Because Baptist doctrine won't save you. Come on, talk to me. And then you got to find out which Baptist doctrine you're going to adhere to. Are you going to adhere to the primitive Baptist doctrine? Are you going to adhere to the independent Baptist doctrine? Are you going to adhere? See, primitive Baptists and independent Baptists, they, they have some standard. But missionary Baptists, they don't have no standard. Whatever floats your boat. Roll, roll, roll your boat right on in the hill. See, you can be a Catholic and you can talk about the Pope all you want to, but I'm going to tell you this. There's no hope in the Pope. And I might well have gone to tell you about the Reverend. There's no heaven for the Reverend. Because the Bible said holding reverence is his name. 
Now you got Reverend Frying Pan, Reverend Skillet, and all, all, of, all of the frying pans and the skillet that call themselves Reverend is going to hell. Now look at your neighbor and say, ain't God good? So now we come to a time and place. That, as Sister Brenda said, you're at the right place at the right time. As you enter in those doors, you've seen a sign welcoming you. You, didn't, you missed that? Welcome to truth. <laughs> Welcome to truth. This is not Fantasy Island. This is not a church that have all the bells and the whistles. So, folks, you can come and, and be in church and your children out riding trains and little animals and all of this kind of foolish little merry-go-rounds. They don't need to be on merry-go-rounds or trains. They need to be in the house of God. And I don't know where these devils come up with children, church, at, but it's not Bible. When I look at the scripture, when the people in Nehemiah 8, and they stood before the water gate, it wasn't just for the adults. It was for them and their children. Everything that Ezra and all the other that embraced the pulpit have to say. They stood there from morning to midday. They didn't have cushion pews with all of the lumbar support. Come on, talk to me. They didn't have all of these comforts of today. But they stood before the water gate from morning to midday. So they stood. And they came there because, not because they had a guest speaker, not because they had some celebrity coming in, but they wanted to hear the word of the Lord. They petitioned Ezra and said, bring unto us of the books of the laws of Moses. We want the word. And people going to church now, and it's in the holiness church, it's in the Pentecostal church, the apostolic church, all they want to do is just shout. But let me tell you, devil, something. That they're not going to have no son the best in heaven. They just going to have heaven's best. Because only the pure in heart going to see God according to Matthew 5 and 8. Because if your heart is not pure, you know this is what vexes me more and more. You hear these folk that call themselves holy, sanctified, apostolic, Pentecostal, and all the other church of God in Christ say that they're saved, but they stand up and tell you that nobody can live perfect. I want you devil to know that that's a damnable doctrine. Because that is not what Jesus taught. That's not what Jesus taught. Jesus told us according to Matthew 5 and 48 to be ye therefore perfect. And there's nothing that God has put in his word that we cannot do. Somebody saying you can't live perfect because they want to commit adultery. You, you devil, you, you can stop it. You ain't got to do nothing but go home to your own wife. No, they, they don't want to. So, you know, somebody is a fornicator, so they not can't nobody live perfect because you want to fornicate. Men want to play in somebody's tutu. Women want somebody to play in their tutu. And don't care if you don't ever like The body is not for fornication. It's not for sexual pleasure. Come on, talk to me. And not for you to be going laying around, sleeping around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Harry, Sally, Sue, and Mary Ann, and Mary Jane. None of these whores. And hold on. Now what must I do to be saved? In the book of Acts. The second chapter, 
I want to call your attention to verse 37. And we want to see what the word of God has to say. Now when they heard this. Now when they heard this. They were pricked in their hearts. Stay with me here. This is why I tell you, if there is no condemnation, there will be no salvation. If the word of God doesn't convict, it won't convert. And so what Peter and the other was preaching pricked them. It convicted them in their heart. And so now we heard what you're saying, Peter. Now we want to know. Men and brethren, what shall we do? They want to find out what must, we, what must we do to be saved. So how do you know that? Because look at what Peter said. Then Peter said unto them, you got to repent. Now this... This word that you don't hear preached, taught, or mentioned in most churches today. They don't tell people that you got to repent. Well, let's talk about repent. Repentance means to turn and go another direction. See, you're going to hell, but now why don't you turn so you can go to heaven? Because the same energy that it takes to commit sin. It takes that same energy and less to live holy. Come on, talk to me. So what do you mean, Elder Thomas? Because the way of a transgressor is hard. But look what Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Oh, y'all thought I didn't know what I was talking about? Because, see, I don't have to look over my shoulder because I'm living right. But you, you slipping around, you slipping around, messing around, you got to look over your shoulder. You trying to call and see, has he left yet? Has she left yet? Well, can we meet here? Can we meet there? Oh, but oh my God. What is somebody else right there? You got to get out the car looking around, trying to see if somebody watching. Well, I got news for you, you hoes and homemongers, that he's watching you. He's just watching over the sparrows. <laughs> He's watching over you too, you whole mom. He's watching over you too. Come on, talk to me. How do you know he's watching over? Because his eyes are in every place. They're holding the good and the evil. Come on, talk to me. God's eyes is in every place. Everything that you do, there's nothing that God doesn't see have you not read? Because most folk want to do their darkness in the nighttime. But let me tell you something. Both day and night. Uh, they are both the same in the eyesight of God. They're both naked. God can see you in the daytime. He can see you at nighttime just as well as he can in the daytime. Come on, talk to me. But we want to find out what must I do to be saved. How can I get to a point that I don't have to do these things? Being saved is not difficult. As long as you're sincere. Because some folks come up there, you know, they want to play around and, and, and act. They are not sincere. But when you are sincere, Lord, save me. God will save you. And you know if you ask God to save you out of a pure heart, then you in faith you believe that God saved me. In faith you believe that God delivered you. God does not have to roll you all over the floor. My God to save you. Come on, talk to me. Now, about folks act like that, that's not an experience with the Lord. If I don't roll from one side of the wall to the other and all, and all your undergarments showing and all of that, that kind of stuff, that, you know, everything must be done decent and in order. See, God did do differently with everybody else. Come on, talk to me. But it's a gift. 
Because when God saves you, you ask God to save you, to, to deliver you from your sin, God does that. And so now, just like, can I just teach? They brought before Jesus a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. And they wanted to stone her. So Jesus began to say, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. But prior, he said, stooped down and he wrote in the sand. Somebody said, what did he write? When I heard one preacher talking about that great historian, Josephus, said he began to write every name down that the woman slept with you a lie. Not according to the scripture. I believe that he wrote because he's still been writing up until this day if she was horned. She wasn't faithful to one man. So I believe in accordance to the writing of Moses, you bring the man and the woman. And I believe that Jesus wrote, where is the man? Where? Because, listen to me. They say, according to Moses' law. See, I, I don't want to hear all that other foolishness. Okay, they, out of their own mouth, said according to Moses' law. No, no, no. We got to rightly divide it. So, I, according to Moses' law, you bring not just a woman, but you bring the man she's doing it with. They said they caught her in the very act of adultery. We caught her, we caught her hoeing. So Jesus asked them to say, okay, in essence, if it's according to the laws of Moses, where's the man? Why didn't you bring the man? Because he might have been a governor. He might have been a mayor. He might have been a senator, you know, some distinguished title, but infested with sin as a dog ear flea. So, they wasn't going to mess up his so-called good name. He's a whole monger, it ain't a good name. So now, they began to leave. Jesus looked at the woman and said, woman, where are thine accuser? She looked and said, master, there are none. He said, neither do I uh, condemn thee. Now go. And hold no more. What sin was she committing? <laughs> she was whoring. So he was saying go and hold no more. He didn't say go and cut back on your horn. He told you S. I. Stop it now. So I'm talking to you up in here today, S-I-N. Stop it now. Stop your laying around, sleeping around with men. With women. Men with men and women with women. Stop the foolishness. So some of you that came last week look back and say, look at your name and say, he's back. <laughs> they, when they knew I was back last Sunday evening. I came back preaching. We don't have time to be playing around. People need to know what must I do to be saved. And Peter told him right off the bat, you got to repent. You got to turn from doing sin or committing sin and turn to do righteousness. You got to turn from darkness to light, from the powers of Satan unto God. Now, you got to turn. Now that your eyes have become open, you find out that you got to repent. It's not about going to church because people feel like if I belong to church, 
then I'm going to heaven. No, 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 no. The devil goes to church. Y'all didn't know that? When Jesus, he, he didn't stop just going to church. He started going to church even before Jesus came on the scene. Y'all didn't know that? The sons of man came before God to present themselves before God. Guess what? Satan came also. To do what? To resist them. So the devil would been coming to church for years. The devil because he's trying to resist people. He's trying to keep people from coming and getting what God has for them. You come and you hear in this word and you become convicted in your soul. But the devil say, hey, you're too young. You got time. And let me, let me tell you something. That's the greatest lie that the devil got going for him in this day and time. <laughs> he ain't going to tell you don't need to be saved. He's going to tell you got time. You don't just don't have to get saved right now. You got time. You got to go out and have your fun because you got time. But let me tell you something. Every day, every day, every day, right now, this very moment, this very second, some young person is dying and stepping out of time into eternity on their way to hell. And you sitting around here thinking, I got time. Come on, talk to me. Some of you, you love, you in love with yourself. You're a narcissist. You in love with yourself. And, and so the, the woman think I'm a 10 and, 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 I, and I got to show my body off. Won't put on decent clothes. Come on, talk to me. Now let me tell you something. All clothes are, are not holiness clothes that pertain to holiness. Come on, talk to me. There's some clothes out there, horse clothes. Lord, help us up in here. It's sad that people go into church and don't know what the Bible says. But I'm going to take my time to teach you. And show you what the word of God has to say. Now, now look at this. In Proverbs 7, you don't have to go to it. You can just write it down. Begin at verse 10. He's talking about a young man void of understanding. And said, he said, behold, thou met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. She had on horse clothes. The reason he recognized her is by the clothes she had on. So let me tell you something. If you're not a whore, why are you dressed like one? Why, don't you, why do you have on horse attire? Come on, talk to me. You cover yourself up. You got folks that's insecure and women that don't have no respect for themselves. That's why they walk around looking nasty. Come on, let me, te let me tell you something. Women, this is from a man and I'm an old man. Men don't be wanting all that stuff that they, everything all hanging out. You cheap. You got it easy on your forehead, easy. Come on, talk to me. Because if you're not for sale, why are you advertising? You know, sometimes you, you, you see people with, the, with records that, that work for companies and they, they got it on, on, on the side, not for hire. Because they don't want nobody to mistake that say, hey, that I'm for hire. So you can't walk around there. You're going to walk around. Even though you're looking like a whore, you're saying, I'm not for sale. Well, why are you looking like you're for sale? If you're a daughter of Sarah and not a daughter of Jezebel, then you ought to dress like that. And let me tell you something. Years ago, we had a young lady at the church. And you know, the stuff that I preach and I teach here, it's tight, but it's right. It's strong, but it's not wrong. Because I was, you know, I'm working at the phone company and I'm all over town. Get repair tickets all over the place and I got to go and repair stuff. So this particular time I had, I walk, go to the apartment, get my keys to go to the, the apartment that I'm supposed to go to repair the phone. Go by the swimming pool, that she is up in there. You could have bought her for a penny. Because she know she had no business around there with your naked self. 
You ain't had no business around there. I don't care. And some of you parents, you going to hell too. You support whoredom. You buy this stuff for your children. Walk around, look like hoes. Now, you, how you, a while ago, you said whore. You, now you're saying hoes. Well, that's the hip hop talk. These devils, they, they, they don't go to uh, uh, taking up English. They listen to all of this foolishness. So, see, when I say whore, you know, they kind of go over the head. But I say whore. Because it registers. Because oh, I, oh, that, I got, that's my talk right there. I know what he's saying there. Now you, you, you see how filthy and how nasty you are. I got to make sin look as nasty as it is. So by the time I finish up going to return the keys to the apartment, she's she getting out the pool and she's headed home. I ain't said nothing. I didn't have to say nothing. You know, like mama and them. Mama and them didn't have to say nothing. All they had to do is they give you that look. Then you need to shut up and drop your head. Because you knew it was something in that look. Can you imagine how Judas felt when he looked? When Christ looked at him? It brought about conviction and condemnation to the extent that he could not handle it. So he went and committed suicide. Because he became convicted in his heart. And this is why folks are going to church. Listen, I don't want to see your drawers. I don't want to see. I, I don't want nothing too tight. Like the young sister said, listen. When she was out there in the world, she said, if it, was, it wasn't tight, it wasn't right. If it was long, something was wrong. And, and so th this is the way that the mindset. If you dress decent, then it's something wrong. Now, now, that's that, that, that whole spirit in you. And then they condone this mess in the church. But let me tell you something. If you want to go to heaven, your heart got to be pure. You got to be a child of the most high God. And you cannot serve God, my God, and not keep God's word. And not obey what God's word said. And so, in the church, women's got to adorn themselves in holy apparel. Modest apparel. Come on, talk to me. Let me tell you what's modest. Anything above the knees. That's not modest. It got to be below the knees. Because let me tell you something. If it's already above the knees and you standing, it's going to do like gas when you sit down. It's going up. <laughs> it's going up. <laughs> y'all y'all know them old shades. You just pull on the string. And it, it just... <laughs> and that's the way... It, that's the way these dresses are. They're just going all up. And, and then, they just, hey, no, no, no. You knew you were going to church. When I see these so-called first ladies sitting up in the pool, it was, they don't have no business up there in the first place. And then they kind of put all these old claws on. Bring my chair, Elder Church. I'm going to be front and center. Because you know you're going to hell. Why you come in the pulpit with this? Why do you come in the pulpit with this? Covering up the gates of hell. You knew you when you left home, you were looking like a whore. So now you're going to come up in here. My God, let me tell you something. They were, Brother Jerry, they were condemned when they left home. That's why they brought this. They, they, I, I have never seen such Brenda never brought home uh, an, an outfit, you know, have a scarf might go with it. But it didn't have no cloth to say, hey, it, it, it's short. A disclaimer, it's short, and I would advise you to take this cloth with you to put over. Come on, talk to me. See, I'm a real man of God. I, I, I got my own stuff at home to work with. And you better let, let everything about her please you. Don't, don't, don't bother. I might have to use it again. Because people are going to church and they, they, it's just a game now. 
But let me tell you something. This is a myth. And they are lying to you that think if you just go to church, then you're going to heaven. No, 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 no. No, ma'am. No, sir. Uh-uh. You know, years ago, I don't know if they still do it, but I know in certain papers in the religious section, they got go to the church of your choice. But on Saturday nights, they used to say, you know, you get your children and, you know, they used to say, where, where are your children at 10 o'clock? They would do that all through the, all through the week. But then on Sunday, on Saturday night, they would say, hey, attend the church of your choice. If you want to go to heaven, you don't have a choice. If you want to go to heaven, you don't have a choice. You want to go to hell, you got a whole lot of choice. But if you want to go to heaven, you don't have a whole lot of choice. Because if all these churches was right, then Jesus wouldn't have to come and establish his church. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And we're looking at the church, the church house. My God, women years ago, holy, so-called holiness churches, people that we used to fellowship with, they, they didn't stop preaching against pants wearing, they didn't put on their jewelry, their makeup, and all this foolishness. Let me tell you something, you're going to hell. You, ain't, you don't have no new revelation from the Lord. Ain't no way in there until God told you, said sin is all right. Hebrew 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hadn't changed. And so let me tell you something. When I look at Psalms 119, 89, forever, oh God, is that word sell in the heaven. His statutes, his, my God, his commandment, my God, his law are forever still in the word of God, in the heaven. So you can change it down here if you want, but we're going to be judged every man according to his work shall be. And we're going to be judged out of those things written in the book, not the NIV. Not all of these old revived virgins. The reason you want, you got that old revised Bible because you want your life revised. You conform to that mess. And he said, listen, don't add to my word and don't take away from it. Because if you take add to it or take away from it, I'm going to add unto you the plague that are written in this book. Come on and talk to me. <laughs> what must I do to be saved? See, folks, when you hear talking about strict, folks don't know what strict is. They don't know what strict holiness is. My God, when they looked at Paul, and Paul said, I was a Pharisee out of Pharisee. My God, I see, he said, I was off the straightest set. He said, you compare me, my God, according to, you compare me to the Sadducee, our standards were strict. But he said, I count all that stuff, but don't, that I might win Christ. When it comes to the knowledge of what God's word say and what God was expecting, what God was requiring of them, he said, I give all that mess up, my God, just to know Christ. And so you, I want to know who he is. Are there all these so-called holy churches? The women, they, 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 they got their sleeves all up here. Uh, nobody ought not to see your armpits. I don't care if you don't ever like it. So you get rid of that mess that you're going to use it for a shell to cover up something that's low cut. I don't want to, I, I don't want to see the two sisters. Looking like two grapefruits sitting up there. You're going to get the flapping around there and something going to come out of there. Uh -oh. You're trying to tuck it in the pocket. Come on, talk to me. See, this is why we need mothers in the church to teach young, young ladies. My God said, hey, that bra you got on don't fit. You got, you got the bra on and you got that much puffed over covering the bra. You, that, you know that's not right. Look at the neighbor and say, that's not right. Are you trying to look sexy? Now you better get something that's going to support your stuff. Look how you look. Because see, some folks are more, they endowed than other folks. But I don't care what it is, it, it needs to be supported. There ain't nothing shifting and shaking. When you put it on, move around a little bit. See how Because if some shaking, you have to say, we got to make some adjustments here. And let me, let me run this in by because folks need to know this too. 
Because see, this, this preaching, this is what they used to preach a long time ago. Let me tell you something. And they are telling you, say, hey, we, see, we don't have to do that now because time has changed. I'm, let me tell you, you're a bald-faced liar. You're a bald-faced liar. And so time has not changed. Because some of you that set up in here, and see, time has changed. You don't have to do all that stuff. You're a liar. Time has not changed. Ever since God created heaven and earth, it been, he separated the, the night from the darkness. And Jesus asked the question, are there not 12 hours in a day? It's 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night. So we got 24 hours. So 24 hours was adequate back then. And 24 hours is adequate today. Time has not changed. So people have changed. When we go to Genesis, the, the, the sixth chapter, well, we can go to the third chapter, and we find out that Adam and Eve changed. It wasn't time for them to start sinning. They chose to do that. Come on, talk to me. And then now the sin is carried over into Genesis, the sixth chapter. And God looked at man and saw that the, man's of, the imagination of a man's heart was only wicked continuously. All they thought about was doing something wicked, just like some of you. Let me hit that. Don't let me forget that. Uh, this is why I left off there. Because you, you got uh, lust hound preachers. Sit up in the pool. They be glad when a church have women's day. So they can sit up in the pool pit behind. But let me tell you something. You can come here when a sister's up here teaching, instructing out the word of God. And no men going to be sitting up there. They're going to sit out here because you, you lust hound. You think you're going to get you a seat. Chopping at the bitch. Looking at all of the junk in the trunk. I thought we were going to sit. Uh uh. Here, you sit down there. You sit with me. Hey, come sit with me. You come sit with me. Because if you sitting up there watching a man behind you, punk you, I'm, I'm going to beat you. You can't take that for granted now. Because you, you got freaks in the pulpit. You, you know, you, years ago, you just kind of can preach that. You know, because they were just looking at women. But they looking at men too now. And, and you can't just uh, look at the bishop and all these are the apostles and all these. Are some, you got bishop punks. You got apostle punks. I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. You got pastors that punk. Now, what must I do to be saved? All right. All right. <laughs> so I'm trying to get you saved. Don't, no, don't say, don't, don't say he, he, he just beating folk down. No, no. Give me 2 second, second Timothy 2. I mean 2 Timothy 4. He ain't just beating folk down. And once you get that, we're going to go over to Revelation 3 and, and 18. No, so they ain't beating folk down. See, so we need to know what the Bible said. They said beating, being beat down. They said that when you're warning folks against sin, you're, you're beating them down. No, no, no. I'm telling you what it's going to take to go to heaven. Read the book. Four. I charge thee, therefore. I charge thee, therefore. Before God. Before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Who shall judge the quick and the dead. He's going to judge the living and the dead. At his appearing and his kingdom. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a judgment of the living and of the dead. Come on. Preach the word. Come on, Tim. I want you to preach it. Be instant in season. Tell you preach it when they like it and when they don't like it. Come on. Out of season. Come on. Reprove. Come on. Rebuke. Hold it right there. Timothy, I want you to reprove sin. Timothy, I want you to rebuke sin. That ain't beating folk down. It has to be in the church. <laughs> Miss Watson, hold what you get, got right there. Give me first, give, give me Titus, the first chapter, verse 5. The church has order. 
Come on. For this cause, I for left. this cause, or this reason, for this purpose, left I thee in Crete. This is the reason I left you in Crete. Come on. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanted. Hey, Titus, you go there and make sure that the church is structured. The church has structure. The church has order. The church is not about just testifying. It's not about just, just shouting. It's about holy standards. The Bible says you're going to know the tree by the fruit it bears. So you don't, I don't want to hear what you're saying. My God, I, I'm joining you by the fruit. You got on horse clothes. Don't tell me you saved and sanctified. Come on, go, go on back. Read down just a little bit. And ordain elders in every city as I appointed thee. Listen, you go down, you ordain elders because we got some messed up folks there. You got some folks that's holding position that shouldn't be holding position. Some folk that been mama called and daddy sent. Now, I didn't call them. Now, don't make me go to Jeremiah 23. He said they ran, but I didn't call them. They spoke, but I didn't tell them to speak. Come on, talk to me. My God, they prophesied out of their own heart. They're not prophesying what I say. They're prophesying out of their own heart. When men, women, boys, and girls get saved for real. When they get thoroughly right. When you get it all out. Get it all out. Read. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, come on, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless, and as stewards of God. Hold it, that, that's good right there. No, no. There's a way we as being saved. He, you said, but he's talking about the bishop. Let me tell you, I'm going to talk about the priest right now. Of the house. The man of the house. The man that's over the house. He ought to make sure that, the, that everybody in the house are, are adhering to holy standards. They might not be saved, but you're going to think they are. They ain't going to be wearing britches to school. Come on, talk to me. Because I want to know where they get them from. And you being partaking in other men's sin, you going to hell. They go out there, let's just say this here. What if the little sister had her drowned in the pool? In hell, she'd have lifted up her eyes. So we don't think like that. In hell, she'd have lifted up her eyes, sitting up on all of this preaching and all this teaching. They think they have to get naked to do everything. They ain't just getting naked to have sex. You got the old man out there with chi chi legs. Legs look like a toothpick in a boot. I got he out there trying to scoot around the morning. Yo. <laughs> he got on a white beater t shirt. Old nappy hair up in the chest. They have to get naked to motor yard. Lord, please let them run over Ant now. <laughs> Praise him. Praise him. <laughs> they be dancing around there like a dog in ants. <laughs> they think the less clothes I got on, the cooler it is. You, let me tell you how stupid you are. Now, you see these little, these what walking around their little hoochie clothes on. All their butt talks out. That's what the Bible says, their butt talks out. It, it's up to the black. With your nasty self. Got on these little old short shorts, the drawers hanging out from under the short. You know you nasty. You double nasty. And then you, you, you got men out there say that that's a disgrace. <laughs> they, they ain't got no God. 
But they look and say, oh, that's a disgrace. She needs, she know she needs to go in there and put some clothes on. And they walk around there with all of this stuff out, and they think they sexy, looking nasty. But then I'm, I'm saying that to say this. When is the last time you saw folks over in the Middle East walking around with no clothes on? Come on, talk to me up in here. When is the last time you saw folks over there as hot as it is walking around with no clothes on? Because they understand the danger of revealing themselves to the ultraviolet race. And so the more clothes you got on, clothes is not on just for you just to walk around and look good. They for protection also. <laughs> I'm trying to teach these brothers. When you're out there, you're mowing, hey, you're out there in the yard and stuff, put a sweatshirt on. Man, that's too hot. No, no, you don't understand. The purpose of when that sweatshirt get wet, it keeps you cool. And so you got that little T-shirt on and it, it, it getting wet and dry, wet and dry. Then you, you get ready to get sick. But they, they don't understand that. I'm just trying to teach them. This, this is wisdom. This is wisdom. And not only that, it's protection as well. See, this holiness. This is holiness. There, there all this other foolish that they call about Hickamo Shine and both C9 trying to call. Cry. I, want the, I want the choir to sing A, B, C, D, and nothing. Ain't no choir going to sing no A, B, C, D, and nothing. I'll preach the whole service. Because in Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, when they called for Ezra, they didn't call for the choir. Before I come, the choir's going to come and bless us. They didn't call for the, the old neck and tail praise team. Ain't no such thing, no praise dancers. There's those that are saved and sanctified, praising God in a holy dance. I don't care if you don't ever like it. <laughs> and they got on their little old negligee clothes. Women, let me talk to you. You know when you get cold. Start sticking out. They start bulging out. Come on, talk to me. And you ain't got no support up there. Then you up there, you out there. Then these little knobs sticking out. And these nasty dogs sitting up there, men, they getting off. Because they see the little dog sticking out. <laughs> Look over there and say, that man is preaching and teaching up in here. Oh, glory to God. But if you don't have a baby, that man ain't got no be no other man, no nobody else got to be seeing your breath. No, I'm just talking about your husband. That, that your husband, that's 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 his property. Because you don't have that's his body. You don't have power over your own body but the husband. Come on, talk to me. But you ought not to go out there exposing yourself with your nasty self. Cover yourself up. Put on dress decent. A ain't nobody li liking you. All they want to do with you is so let me come on. Let me look on this side over here. They ain't in love with you. All they want to do is play in your tutu. Let me slide over here. All they want to do is just play in your tutu. They don't want you. All they want to do is just play in your tutu. They don't want you. You all right, brother? Now look at your neighbor and say, they are hit it and quit it. They'll move around, brother. Hey, they are hit it and quit it. They'll move around.
Wait, wait, yet. Come on. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Timothy, you preach it in season and out of season. Why do you want me to preach it in season and out of season? Reprove. Now, now, skip on down. For the time will come. The reason come. I want you to preach it, be instant in season and out of season, because the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want the soundness of God's word. No, no, they just want something. They want something that's going to shout them. Uh-uh, I want something that's going to convict you. I want something where it calls you to see yourself so you will change. I want to be saved. I want to be saved for real. I want to be saved. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be saved for real. See, you can come here and be saved for real. Because I'm going to preach it tight. So I can show you what's right. There's nothing right but the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing right but the soundness of God's word. And so we got to preach it. We got to preach it. We got to preach it. So I don't want to be around there getting folks shouting. And, and then and next thing you know, you, you got a church full of, my God, cool brothers and hot sisters. That's why they all, well, most of folks get, they get married because they done went out there and messed up. They didn't hold around. They didn't slept around in the church. They know El Tomo don't play that. You know, I used to like that little, little wind show. He come out there with that clown suit on there. And he said, homie, don't play that. And he start beating you with that sock. So it says, El Tomo don't play that. I'm going to beat you with this word. I'm going to put this word on you. I'm going to whack you with this sword. Come on, talk to me. I'm going to hit you not with Thor's hammer, but with Jeremiah's hammer that breaks rocks into pieces. Come on and talk to me. My God, I'm trying to get rid of that stony heart. My God, and get you to a place of repentance that you'll return from your wicked way. That you'll turn unto true and the living God and serve God out of a pure heart fervently. Listen, I don't just preach here, I teach. I get all into your finance, I got get all into your marriage. Because if anybody don't, if they messing up in their finance, it's not because they hadn't been taught. If they, you got problems in your marriage, it's not because you've been taught. Come on, talk to them, you haven't been taught. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. And, and the, the idiots, you know, this is what I have to deal with. I met with, with many pastors. You know, folks that, you know, like when I come, they act like they ain't never heard what I done preached. Well, some of it they hadn't, but, but then, for the most part, they have. Then when they come here, they folks that are all about the people. They ain't moved while I'm preaching. And then he preached the same thing. That I'm preaching. Then they all about to turn the pew over. Turn, do, you want, want to do a, a somersault and all that. They're just backflips and, and all that food. You, I, I look at that hypocrite. Because anybody can say, I thank God, uh, thank everybody else from their, their pastor for, for teaching me, showing me how to be a wife. I think I've been be showing you this for years, showing how to be a husband. I'm teaching you because I can't be a good minister and not show you what the words say. So I don't feel bad. I preach it and I teach it. And, and then now, I done got to the point, I ain't finna rehash nothing. I'm freeing myself up. I ain't going back over all this stuff that you already know. Go to Hebrews 6. You know, so get that what, what Paul was saying. I got uh, uh, Peter was saying, uh, I teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Come on. Six, so read. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Now this is the thing. You've been taught it. Let's move on. Let's go on to perfection. You've been taught the word of God. Now it's time to go on to perfection. When you have need of meat. You're around there still on milk. Now, 
I do, now we, we trying to get to a point we got to move on. We can't keep going back over the same thing. We got to leave the principles of these things. We trying to go on to perfection. But because of the hardness of your heart, because you, as I must say, you got a horse for him. You rebel, you, you're hard headed. You know, nobody can say that like, like grandma with your hard headed self. <laughs> oh, yeah, they can say with your hard headed self. Now, God, and this is where you got a lot of hard headed folks in the church. They want to do, you know, this is not Burger King. You, you know, I mean, you can go to McDonald's and you have it your way, but you can't have your, I mean, you can't go to McDonald's and have it your way, but Burger King, you can do what you want to do. Uh, you can go to the other church and do what you want to do, but here, we're going to do it God's way. What you, what you got? Read. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. See, you got to go back and try to get these folks saved all over again. No, no. We ain't going to lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works. That's supposed to be dead. You're supposed to be over that. You're supposed to be over that. And I'm not going to keep going back over that. Because see, now from now on, what I'm going to tell you to do, move around. Because they, if it didn't help you the first, second, third, and the 50th time I done preached it and taught it. So you need to move around. So why, why, why? Because you're supposed to be going on to perfection. You're supposed to be going on to perfection. You can't be going into perfection. You're doing the same old thing. I keep telling you. If I'm hammering it and you keep putting your hand there, I'm going to whack it again. And I'm going to whack it until when? Until you move it. Yeah. Until when I hit that again, you won't be the one saying out. Because you didn't move. And so it's time out. Somebody, the problem is somebody's not moving. They are standing still. And so if you're not advancing in God or progressing in God, you're going to hell. St Let me tell you something. Standing still and regressing is the same thing. In other words, you're not moving forward. I heard, a, I was reading something in, in, in a book, and it said, a turtle is advancing when he stick out his neck. Because he farther than it was before. <laughs> he ain't moved no, and not one is, but he stuck his neck out. So it looked like he farther along than what he was at first. And so I don't want to be like a turtle that just have to stick my neck out. My God, to see like I'm moving. Uh -huh, and I got to move. We're going on to perfection. Come on, y'all. Y'all got it? Huh? No, no, I won't get down there just to the, you, you have need of meat. Y'all, you, all you, you own milk, but you have need of strong meat. Because that, that, what that is saying, you're growing. Come on, me. Yeah, go ahead and read. You got to read. When you ought to be teachers. So now you got, I got to teach you again, all uh, over again. Instead of you ought to be teaching somebody else, you ought to be an example of what being preached and taught here. Now I got to teach you all over again. Come on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The ABCs of the word of God. No, nobody. I don't need nobody. Uh, time I got to go to a marriage counselor. I'm giving you what you need. Because if the word preached here, the Bible, it's not going to help you. My God, I don't care what nobody tell you. It's not going to help you. The thing about it is, you need to be saved. When you get saved. Ain't no sense spending hundreds of dollars. My God, trying to go, I'm going to marriage counselor. You get saved, then you'll do what the Bible said. You'll do what the husband's supposed to do. The wife will do what she's supposed to do. Come on, talk to me. Where's the prophet? The fault lies in you. And so nothing nobody else says is going to help you. But until you get saved, you submit yourself to the word of God. When you become delivered from your sins. Come on, read. You're not growing. You're not developing. Because you know why? You're in the flesh. 
You're yet in the flesh. Are you not carnal? <laughs> Are you not carnal? And so this is the reason the, the why you're in the state that you're in because you're carnally minded. And the carnally minded cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. And God, you're, you're teaching a spiritual word to a carnal minded people. And therefore they're coming to ask, oh, I went, I went to a marriage conference. A con- a, 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 what, is, what they call it? Conference. And man, that may, I, man, our marriage is great. You hypocrite, you. Oh, man, somebody taught me. They told me how to be a husband. They told me how to be a wife. I'm, did the word tell you that? Now, what's the problem? I preach the word. I teach it. Now, what is the problem? You just a two-bit hypocrite. You ain't making nobody. And all the saints all look up in the, in the sky. I didn't know they telling a lie. Don't clap. Don't do nothing. Just look up and say, because you know they telling a lie. Because what I say unto one, I say unto all. I'm saying to everybody. And see, this is what's wrong. Folks don't know their role. But see, if I can get you saved, if I can get you delivered from your flesh, then I can get you delivered from the desires of the flesh. Come on, Mr. Watson, go to for second. Um, I mean, uh, 1 John, uh, St. John 2 and 15. I mean, 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world. The problem is they in love with the world. They in love with the world, not in love with Christ. Come on. Neither the things that are in the world. You're in love with, with, with the world and the things of the world. Come on. If any man love the world. Now, if any man, woman, boy, girl love the world. The love of the father is not. You can't love God and the world. But because when you love God, my God, you're going to forsake the world. Come on, talk to me. My God, Peter and the other disciples, my God, they proved to him that they loved him. They said, Master, we have forsaken all to follow you. And you still got your junk. You still got your mess. You hadn't forsaken all. You got to give it all up, my God, to follow Jesus Christ. Come on. Hold, hold that right there, but I want you to come back there. Give me a, what, I'm, what I'm looking for. Give me 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 7. But before you get that, give me 1 Thessalonians 5. And let's look at verse 23. And the very God of peace. And the very God of peace. Not another God. The very God of peace. Sanctify you. Holy. He sanctified you entirely. And see, some folks sitting up in here in this word, this word will sanctify you. But they are not, they're not sanctifying them entirely because they're not giving themselves entirely over to him. They're sitting up in here like, like, like I'm, I'm deep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to this. I'm going to that. That don't make you deep, you fool, you. Because I got to see what kind of fruit you're bringing forth. Because if you're not bringing forth holy fruit after this holy preaching, something is wrong. It lets you know that you have not been sanctified wholly, completely, entirely by the very God of peace. Come on. And I pray God, your whole spirit. Your whole spirit. And soul. And soul. And body. I like that because he's talking about the threefold man, body, soul, and spirit. I got a, you sanctifying all of it. Oh, every aspect of you. My God, your being, he's sanctifying it. Body, soul, and spirit is sanctified to him. Come on here. Be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute now. Let's go back to sanctification. Being sanctified. Sanctification. It means that you're set apart for God. You are set apart. To serve God, for the service of God, to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Jesus said, I came to do thy will, O God. So I'm sanctified to serve you. Y'all didn't know that? St. John 17, 19, Father, I sanctified myself that they also might be sanctified. 
So he sanctified. He said, Jesus said, I'm sanctified so I can do what you want me to do. Now, watch this here. I came in the volume of the book, oh God, to do that will. I didn't come to do what I want to do. I came to do that will. And when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, my God, he's struggling with his flesh. The flesh don't want to die. It don't want to agonize in pain and suffering. But finally, he got a breakthrough. And Father said, not as I will. But thy will be done. Now God, so God, this is why he came, he told him, said, listen, I was sanctified for this purpose. I came into this world to die. That was his purpose. But when it came time to die, flesh rose up and didn't want to die. It didn't want to go to Calvary. It didn't want to agonize in pain. Because see, folk go to church now, you know, preachers ain't trying to learn the word of God. You hold what you got. Elder, sir, give me... Uh, Ezra 7 and 10. Because they want to. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, 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 oh. Now, what is that all about? Let me ask you something. Do you reckon Jesus preached like that? Because you devils up there trying to entertain folk. Well, I stepped up in and I was invited to a revival. The preacher was preaching. So I got up before the preacher. They asked, invited, you know, they asked me to have words. And, and I, 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 I got to tell them, you know, all these folk, they just come there. They just want to bang, jangle. They just trying to get, get, catch a tune. When I'm preaching, all the musicians can sit down because they need to listen. Because most of the time they're over there, they wrist limp. They, I got the preacher straight now. I don't want it shaking. I want it still. Look, look like it's going up and down. Oh, no, I want it. I want it at attention. I don't want to know. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, brother. Straighten that wrist out. And let me say this. You, you, you parents, y'all better pay attention to these boys walking around here with these skinny jeans on. That's a punk spirit. That's a punk spirit. Brother, you walk around here, man, with, with skinny jeans on, yay. There's some stuff in there. Why you want to look like a punk? You want pants on that hug and your nasty tail. Who both been reading? Come on. Come on. Come on, read Ezra 7 and 10. See, the people, this is what's wrong in the poor pit. They are not preparing their heart to seek the law of God. They are not preparing their heart to seek the law of God. They don't want something fresh. They got an old catalog, an old message. Because this is the one I said, you get an in invitation. You yeah, go, go through and see what. Yeah, I preached that one pretty good. I'm going to preach that one when I go. I can, put, I can really act a fool when I preach that. I can really act a fool when I preach this. I'm trying to get you saved. I'm trying to get you saved. What must I do to be saved? I'm telling you. <laughs> Come on. I'm talking to you up in here, preachers. TGAC, I'm talking to you. Come on, read the book. He prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Oh, to do it. Now, I'm not talking about don't do as I do, but do as I say do. No, 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 no. You hypocrite, you. Now, God, Paul said, listen, you follow me as I follow Christ. The husband man that labored must be first partakers of the fruit. Don't go up there talking about preaching something. Don't, don't, don't hold monger. And, and then you're talking about don't do as I do, but do as I say do. Oh, uh -uh, no, don't you hold monger. Call it for you, too. Don't you lust. You, don't you be beating your wife. Don't you be, I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. Which one of you devil sitting up here talking about I'm slipping cuss? You ain't saved. You're not saved. Because out, out of the same fountain can't come bitter water and sweet water. Out of the same fountain can't come blessings and cursing. Oh, tell me it slipped out. You alive, it ain't slipped out. Out of your heart 
The reason you're cussing, the reason it's coming out is because it's in your heart. Because your heart is not pure. Come on, let's read. Not only he did he prepare his heart, he prepared his heart to seek the law of God, to do it, and to teach it. How do we teach? We teach by precept and example. We don't that that's why you don't say don't do as I do, but do as I say do. But if you're a real man of God, you're a real child of God, you say it like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because let me tell you something. If that devil sitting up there doing that there, he's not living right, he's sucking on cigarettes, he he's looking at pornography. Uh oh. Ain't no saints got Cinemax and all this in junk. Showtime and Showtime all the way 1 through 50. Cinemax 1 through 100. What's what them other channels? Come on, talk to me. Huh? Hey, yeah, HBO 1 to 3,000. Y'all, y'all know it. Don't, don't sit y'all tail up here and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Because some of y'all got it at your house. Some of y'all got this. Tell me, I got mine in my house. So I want to watch the sporting event. They got something on Channel 11. They got ESPN. How, how come you don't just subscribe to ESPN? All right. All right. All right. Now, then you got to get all that, all that field in there. The devil know if I can get this in a package deal. Ooh. Why that man preaching up in here? Eh? That man preaching all up in here. <laughs> I was said no evil thing before my eyes. You don't need to be looking at Miss January repressed. Miss February, March, April, May, and June, and who all the way through December. The Bible said, let her breast please you. Ooh. You want some breast? Go up down on Tuesday. When they got the 99 cents, special, give me, get you a couple of breasts. <laughs> wait, 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 you don't make any dip on Tuesday, whatever day. Go get you some. Yeah, I want a couple of breasts. And they said, do you want it regular or you want it spicy? Since, since you're a freak, I want mine spicy. <laughs> and you just set your freaky self up there and look at the two breasts. Come on here, El Let me preach up in here. To teach in Israel the statutes and judgment. My God, that's the reason we need somebody that's going to study the word of God. My God, do the word of God. Teach the word of God. Come on, talk to me. My God, by precept and example. No, because see, when you come here, this is just like at Motel 6. We leave the light on for you. Right? <laughs> Um, the light stay on here. Because I'm going to show you everything. Whatsoever may manifest is light. Light reveals all of that junk. I don't care if you don't ever like it. Come on, Elsa, give me John 3, 319. I'm about finished. I got it. Well, I got a few more minutes. Come on, read. 21. Get, get started, do verse 19. That's what I want. <laughs> this is the condemnation. Oh, this is what brings about conviction. Light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light. 
They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Come on, Mr. White, you read the first Tim, I mean John 2.15. Skip on down to verse 16. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. Come on. Is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. But it's of the world. It's of the world. I know the lust of the flesh. Darkness. They love darkness. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. They love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. Now get me. Uh, Elsa, you give me Galatians 5.19. Come on, Mr. White, read. And the world passeth away. The world gonna pass away. And the lust thereof. And the lust thereof. And the desires thereof. But he that doeth the will of God. But he or she that doeth the will of God. That obey God's word. Abideth forever. Shall abide forever. Because if you are not doing the will of God, you're going to hell. Come on, read Galatians 5, 19. Now the work of the flesh shall manifest with your deeds. That's why they commit adultery because they messed up. Oh, hold that what you got. Give me Mark 7, 15. And you hold right there. Come on, read, El Church. Now the lust of the flesh are manifest with your deeds. Adultery? That's a husband that won't be faithful to his wife. Now, come on, let me make this perfectly clear. He that looketh upon a woman and lust after her have a committed adultery with already in the heart. He, he didn't have to play in a tutu. <laughs> no, no, he didn't have to play in the tutu. To commit a dutch. Now God, he did it in his heart. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When your heart is pure, you're not lusting at. Come on, read. <laughs> see here. Now watch this here. Lasciviousness. Come on, read. Look at all of the, wait a minute. Go back and back up at the first 19. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness. Now hold that right there. All of those are sexual sins. Perverted sin and all other kind of sin. All of that is included. The first thing off the bat, he dealt with the lust of the flesh and he dealt with sexual sin. And this is what the this is the greatest problem in the church. And ain't it's not enough men in the church. You're not trying to find them husband. You're trying to go to heaven. And if it's in in the will of God for you to have a husband or a wife, my God, yeah, you you just wait because God got a mate for you. You don't have to go out there and, and shake, shake, shake. Shake your honey. I'm, I'm gonna be nice right there. Just trying to catch a man. Kind of dance, nasty. You going to hell. That's why you got all these one-nighters. They hit it and quit it. Come on, come on. All of these, these first four sins are sexual sins. All of those are sexual sin. And then you get to lascivious. This talk about, talks about unbridled lust. You nasty devil would do anything. There's nothing ungodly sexually that you can think of that your nasty self won't do. And some of you sitting up in here are despicable. It's okay to say you preaching all the time when you preach. <laughs> I know I'm preaching if you don't say nothing. I don't care if the carpet have to say amen. Come on. Now watch these here. They're just, we just going to do a few of these. Come on. Idolatry. Witchcraft. See, we, we don't have these folks running around now caught up in astrology. Horoscopes. Only horror about it is you going to hell. And I'm going to tell you what, your, your, what, what your, your sign is. You're a sinner that needs to be saved. But 
Oh, no, that, that's good. We're good right there. All of these are social sin. All of the other sins, y'all can read them on the other time, on your own time. These are social sin. Now, come on. No, so watch. 